The Reddit IPO, March Madness, Pump and Powell, Mind Control. I'm Zunaid, that's Aaron Bree, and this is the Market Breakdown. And I feel like NVIDIA has just been in the news the whole damn year, pretty much. And for very good reason, they just filled out where I think the San Jose Sharks play. I think it's like 11,000 nerds that attended this AI conference where they revealed the Blackwell B200 GPU, which is supposed to be the world's most powerful chip for AI. I mean, this is just bonkers. And let's be honest, this is still the early innings of what AI can do. Yeah, I mean, NVIDIA has been your clear winner of the AI trade so far. The market hit new all-time highs on Wednesday and uh, in, in large part because of NVIDIA's strength. Uh, I mean, I didn't tune in too much to this uh, thing because, the you know, Jensen Wong is such a smart guy. They're talking about all this AI stuff and the actual chip technology. I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah I don't understand all of it. <laughs> so I don't know how much it really – how much – good it does me to like you know watch what they're talking about but we could we were watching the the stock reaction and there was actually a slight sell-off on the first day of the conference but the stock has bounced back nicely since then uh micron had some you know super strong earnings so that helped bring nvidia stock up again on thursday so and we're gonna keep seeing nvidia in the news yeah. more and more like you said it's the early innings and nvidia is the clear leader in this space they are like the godfather of ai right now and it, and we'll see if it continues to be that way and you know a lot of people saying that Jensen is the Steve Jobs for AI. I mean, it's fun. First, I think it's great to be compared to Steve Jobs. And I feel like he's definitely going to be that type of comparison. And he might even surpass Steve Jobs, depending on how far this goes. But more importantly, they talked about Kramer, I think, asked Jensen on Mad Money, hey, are you going to do a stock split? And here's what Jensen had to say. We'll think about it. Today's not the day to announce. Last 30 seconds from you. NVIDIA is already on such a hot run. I mean, this thing might just make all-time highs again if they do a stock split, right? Yeah, 100%. I mean, any time in the last few years you've seen stock splits, they've usually reacted well to that because it makes option trading more attractive. It makes the stock look more affordable, even though you're really buying the same thing. It's just a different price tag. So uh, NVIDIA now up at around $900 a share. Would not shock me at all if the company announces a stock split in the next year or so. Um, which I would like because it would make it a little bit more affordable for me to buy a few shares. Keeping on moving, we go from NVIDIA the Beast to Mr. Beast, who's having his own little TV show, a competition of sorts, if you will, as he went ahead and has a $5 million game show with Prime Video, a.k.a. Amazon. Netflix, I think, went ahead and dropped the ball on this one, but it's a reality competition that's going to be called Beast Games. And the show will have a thousand contestants that'll be competing for a five million dollar reward. What do you think about this one? I'm a little pissed off. Can you reach out to me to broadcast it or host it? But yeah, what are well, your I'd thoughts rather, on this rather, one? I think I'd rather participate than host it, but you know, get a chance to I'm sure the paycheck <laughs> is pretty good to host it, but not five million dollars. So No, it's not. Um you know, this is interesting. I think Mr. Beast has such a big following with younger people that wherever he goes, they're, they're probably due to add some subscribers. Um, and I know net or I know uh, Twitter and Elon Musk uh, were trying to like court Mr. Beast to post videos exclusively to X, and Mr. Beast came out and said that X still has a little bit of work to do when it comes to its videos. So Mr. Beast, you know, obviously sticking with his his YouTube and now teaming up with Prime Video. So I'm sure Elon Musk isn't too thrilled about that that uh, that. Mr. Beast decided not to go with X for this game show. Is it Howie Mandel? It is. I think in the shooting, and this is what I believe happened. I know the second part of this definitely happened. I think Howie Mandel might be involved in some way because he went to go hang out with Mr. Beast and Mr. Beast was showing him all the plaques of YouTube. And this is something really cool. I didn't even think about this. Mr. Beast not just has his own different channels. I think he has over 55, but he also has like Mr. Beast gaming Portuguese or Mr. Beast gaming another language. So it's like it's dubbed in different languages. And like what, what a simple thing that just has such big impact. Can't wait to see what Mr. Beast does. I still need to try, by the way. I think you and I should try Mr. Beast's chocolate candy by the time we come on next week's episode. But let's go ahead and move on to the IPO, Reddit IPO. They just went ahead and debuted. They have a high currently of about 58 bucks almost. But are you buying this long term? What are you doing? By the way, ticker for Reddit, R-D-D-T. Yeah, I mean, I personally am not buying this. I think, I don't know if we've talked about this, Zunet. I definitely talked about another show on Benzinga. Just the fact that social media stocks outside of Meta, really, 
haven't done that great on the on the market whether you look at snapchat back when twitter was publicly traded uh pinterest so just because of this track record um you know i'm not gonna buy reddit long term i might trade it because it should be pretty volatile its first few weeks on yeah. the market it was volatile today i mean reached a high of uh nearly 60 dollars whip dropped down to around 45 P investors came in and started buying the dip at 45 so me i did i did i'm in at 47.85 there you 50 go. You're shares, the, baby. You're in I'm the buying the dip. I'm buying the dip. You're in the green, <laughs> But here's the baby. thing, though. You want to talk about compensation. Uh, you had Reddit CEO Steve Hoffman that had to defend his $193 million compensation because of the backlash he got from Reddit's unpaid moderators. That's right. If you're a moderator spending hours of your time moderating the subreddits, they're not getting paid. Here's what he had to say to that. He said, look, I'm glad this question was asked because there's been a lot of commentary on this topic. Begin start explaining that the compensation side of things, which is made up of salary and stock, is set by the Reddit's board, which were depending on his performance. So he continued to say, if the company does well, I will do well. If the company does not do well, I don't either. That's cute, but that still doesn't address the fact that you're not paying the moderators. You yeah, got to I mean, pay the moderators, am I right? I agree. I mean, that's how, you know, Reddit's been basically built on the back of these moderators for a long time. Um, but yes, Huffman makes more. Uh, the compensation package was more than uh, Pinterest, Meta and Spiegel's or, uh, sorry, and Snap CEOs combined. So that's Zuckerberg, Bill Reddy and Evan Spiegel. Just an insane, you know, number there. Two hundred million dollars in a year for any type. No matter what you're doing, that's a lot of money. So. Uh, not surprised he's catching some backlash and you know, I mean, if you're making that much money, you probably can, you could, you could defend it a little bit, right? Like it's, it's worth it. I, I, I'd take some flack for $200 million. I'd be willing to endure that. Yeah. I mean, I sure would, but will you be willing to endure the commentary that pumping power gets? Cause just two sentences here. You ready? And tell me if you're surprised at all. Okay. Rates remain unchanged nope, and the market surprised. pumps. Brrr. That's all. I'm not. I'm not Hispanic, but I could. I could do the R, R's. You, you know what I mean? That's what the market does. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, you saw uh, when Powell was speaking on Wednesday, the market hit new all-time highs, and it really was. I mean, the the rates remaining unchanged. That was you know, pretty, pretty much a given going into this announcement. But what wasn't a given was the Fed saying, hey, we're not going to or we're going to continue our plan to cut rates three times this year. A lot of people thought going into this because of our hotter than expected inflation reports that we've got in the past couple of weeks, that the Fed would continue to kick the can down the road in terms of pushing off those rate cuts. They said, no, we're still seeing strong economic growth and we still see a path to cut three more times this year. It'll probably be once a quarter in Q2, Q3, and Q4. So, I mean, that's all systems go, baby. When you got a strong, a, a hot economy and a Fed that's talking about cutting rates, that's like the ideal situation for stocks. So not really a surprise to see the market hit new all-time highs. You've got March Madness going on. It just tipped off a couple of hours ago at the time of this recording on Thursday. Give me your predictions. Give me your upsets. I'm curious who you think is going to benefit in terms of stocks. You've got DraftKings, BetMGM. You've got Caesars as well, but also more importantly, I was watching the pre-market prep earlier and you dropped a little stat on me. It's about lost productivity. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, there's a lot of fun, fun facts about March Madness. So according to some reports and analysis, it's expected that the U.S. economy will lose $17 billion in productivity during March Madness. Uh, you know, from people that are calling in sick to work to stay home and watch games. Obviously, we're not doing that today. We're here. Or people no. that are watching games at work, whatever it is. It's a lot of money. I mean, it's not that much money when you consider our whole entire GDP. I mean, $17 billion. But at the end of the day... Uh, that's a, that's a decent chunk of change. I, I am a little afraid to show you what's on my other screen right now. I'm just going to show you for the folks that are. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> I can um, multitask as as, baby. <laughs> as, as far as, as far as predictions and whatnot going, I do have Auburn winning in my bracket and I basically, yeah. I went with a team who I thought a lot of other people wouldn't pick. So in one pool that I'm in with 15 people, I'm the only one that has Auburn, uh, which I like doing that versus picking like a UConn or a Houston that a lot of other people will be picking because then it just gets so yeah. hard to, you know, I'm basically just saying, hey, if Auburn goes on a run, I can win some money. Yeah, well, we'll see if that ends up coming true. But here's what has already come true. It is Neuralink. We first, I saw a live stream of this. Maybe it was in Pigs or something like that a couple of years ago. But you now have Elon Musk's Neuralink that shows first 
where there's the first brain chip patient playing chess and God bless this person, went through a unfortunate accident, lost uh, some capabilities in the body. Nolan, he's 29 years old. He was paralyzed below the shoulder after a driving incident or an accident, excuse me, and had to get an implant, you know, for the Neuralink in January. Neuralink went ahead and released a nine minute videos in which Nolan went ahead and played chess just with his brain, just with his mind. And it was just completely insane. Like he was able to turn off the music on his laptop. It's stuff that we've seen on TV now being a reality. And we thought AI was something. Dude, this Neuralink stuff is just on a whole new level. Yeah, I mean, I've been not, I've been kind of against this for a while. I mean, just in terms of, of for myself, right? If someone has a, a need for this and it works, great by all means. But if this thing comes to market and people start just willy-nilly putting them in their brain, I'm out on it. Uh, you know, great for this guy that was able to play chess with the with the Neuralink. I mean, the future's here, like you said. Like, I didn't expect to actually see this come to fruition, at least so soon. The fact that it's 2024 and we're already having this, you know, show signs of working makes me think, oh, God, what's it going to look like in 20 years? The main thing I'm scared of with these Neuralink and, and things like that is if you can put a chip in your brain that basically makes your brain be able to operate like a computer, you know, faster than humans and all this, people may feel obligated to, or otherwise they might get, you know, like left behind. Like if all your coworkers start putting one in and they're all product so much more productive because they have this extra technology and you don't, you might want to do it. And the next thing you know, we're all kind of, you know, not forced to do it, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Like it would, uh, that yeah. seems a little scary to me. No, that totally makes sense. And Here's what I imagine when I think of Neuralink and what it's doing, there's this clip on in Matilda where she's controlling the blinds and the glasses and the kitchenware. That's what I feel like we might end up seeing in the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. We'll get there before we get to flying cars possibly, but okay. you've got the DOJ that sues Apple over iPhone's monopoly in a landmark antitrust case. I feel like Apple's always in an antitrust case. Like I feel like Apple just has a bunch of sidekicks and no one really trusts them to do anything great whatsoever, but you've got the Justice Department that went out and sued them with the monopoly because it's harmed consumers, developers, and rival companies. I'm sorry that we're good at what we do, that we flooded the market with success, and now you have a problem with us. That's how I go ahead and receive this. Yeah, I mean, we've seen, like you said, we've seen Apple be the victim of these types of lawsuits in the past. Uh, typically, you've seen the EU and European countries be more willing to kind of crack down and enforce some of these regulatory fines. So the fact that it's coming from the U.S. Department of Justice and like 16 states are banding together for this seems like a pretty big deal. Um, Apple stock did get hit on Thursday on this, trading down more than 4% at the time of recording. Uh, and I mean, look, like Apple, like you said, it's like it's not I don't think they like out they went out. With the intentions of becoming a mono to monopolize all these things, I think they've just su make such good products that people buy them, and then they start using you know the Apple Pay on their Apple phone, and then they you, you know on their Apple Watch with their Apple headphone. Next thing you know, they're taking a lot of the market, and then they Apple has to be fair uh, had some policies in the past that have like been specifically designed to try to push out competition. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I don't think this is going to kill Apple by any means, but it is a big deal, a big case, and Apple stock is definitely getting hit on it. And I had, you know, last note on that, or I guess that's that's the pretty much there, but last note on the podcast side of things, I had someone slide into my DMs. Puddles is what they want to be known for. Uh, said she loves the podcast. We had over 2,000 people that watched the last episode, so shout out to you, Puddles. Appreciate you for watching. And Aaron Bree, any final words? Hold on. Eh, no one cares what you have to say. Oh, Five more what? seconds left of this basketball game. All right. Oh, dang. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> so, and that is an example of why productivity is at a downturn and why people or companies are losing billions of dollars. My name is Zunaid. That is Aaron Bree. And this is the Market Breakdown.